Just hours ago, Republican Karen Handel declared the winner in the high-stakes Georgia special election that went down to the wire. The race seen as a potential turning point for the nation. Democrats taking the closeness of the race as a voter rejection of President Trump. But tonight's result may instead embolden the president's base and could bolster his agenda going forward. Here's ABC's Steve Osinsami. Tonight's victory, it's for you and it's for every single citizen in the 6th District. Tonight, a hard-fought victory for Karen Handel. Her win is a sigh of relief for Republicans and a much-needed boost for the president. I need to also thank Speaker Ryan and the House leadership, and a special thanks to the President of the United States of America. President Trump is already tweeting, fantastic job, we're all very proud of you. Handel's victory could have a big impact on governing for President Trump. He's able to go to members of Congress and say, look, if you stand for my agenda, the Republican agenda, you can still win. This all-important race has transfixed the nation. It had plenty of controversy. When will it stop? It won't if John Ossoff wins on Tuesday. And it was plenty expensive. The most expensive race in American history. Tonight's race has decided so much more than one district's fate. The most pivotal political moment yet to face this White House. On one side, there was a career politician and conservative. On the other side, a 30-year-old Democrat who was running against President Trump's agenda. This is the first major referendum on President Trump. Actual voters weighing in on policies because both sides have engaged in a district that could swing either way. The two candidates were fighting to fill the seat of former U.S. Representative Tom Price, who resigned in February to become the Health and Human Services Secretary in the President's Cabinet. We're outside St. Mary's Orthodox Church here in Roswell, Georgia. This is a polling place in this area where Karen Handel, the Republican candidate in this congressional race, voted this morning. Uh, we've seen a steady stream of voters here all day today. Thank you. This now extra special election day began as each candidate made their final pitch to voters with smiles on their faces, but ready to fight. What do you say to your voter today? That he hey wishes he could vote You're like me since Handel? I live in the district. As Republican Karen Handel put in her vote today at a church near her home, she pointed out that Democrat John Ossoff doesn't even live up here. He didn't take the slight quietly. It's typical of a career politician lacking any substance, like Karen Handel, when asked by the press for her message to the public um, to throw something out that head. Handel is a former Georgia Secretary of State and businesswoman. You have been covering elections long enough to know that special elections are called special for a reason. Karen Handel is a longtime fixture in Georgia politics. She's run for a lot of things and come close. Uh, so she's someone that's well known in the area. She became Georgia's first Republican Secretary of State in 2006 and then unsuccessfully ran for governor. But she's a name here. She's a, a good staunch conservative Republican, and uh, she'll take care of the Democrats as well as she will the Republicans. The president even weighed in on several occasions, linking his agenda with her win. Well, get out and vote for Karen. In the middle of the Trump era, Ossoff, on the other hand, was counting on energizing dissatisfied voters. Folks across the country who have lost faith. And in this room, this team, has the power to help restore some of that faith. And who'd you vote for, if you mind me asking? Well, I voted for the Democrats. John Ossoff uh, is a very young man. He's 30 years old. He worked for Congressman Hank Johnson uh, in the neighboring 4th District and uh, has come back home to run for this seat. Until he decided to run, almost no one knew his name. But then U.S. Congressman John Lewis gave him an endorsement. Uh, John Lewis, of course, is an icon, a civil rights icon, both in the country as a whole and in Georgia. But he's also somebody you would expect to endorse the Democratic candidate. Ossoff charms celebrities, too. There's a special congressional election on April 18th. What can you do? Let's take this thing home. But there was that one annoying issue, sort of an un forced error. Look, it's never helpful to not live in the district. Although it's perfectly legal, this incredibly popular candidate lives outside the district he was trying to represent, an issue he addressed in a debate on WSB-TV earlier this month. I live across from Emory University to support my fiance while she finishes medical school. I'm proud to be supporting her career. 
but it wasn't enough to slow him down. Piles of cash came pouring into his campaign from across the country, 8.3 million, then more. A squirrel is going to get a pretty decent percentage of the vote if he has $30 million behind him. But all the spending from Democrats didn't pull off a win. And there was plenty of money spent on the other side, too. America under threat. North Korea marching towards nuclear weapons. ISIS-inspired attacks here and abroad. The fact is that each party has just seen it as a bellwether for the future and feels very strongly that winning it is everything. But this past Sunday, a fringe group that supports Handel took the fight to a new low when they released this ad tying Ossoff supporters to last week's shooting of Republican lawmakers. Same unhinged leftists cheering last week's shooting are all backing John Ossoff. And if he wins, they win. Stop them. Stop them now. Representative Scalise is fighting for his life. I think it's disgraceful to politicize it. Handel quickly rejected the ad, saying she had nothing to do with this. Absolutely disgusting and beyond inappropriate. The extra attention from outside Georgia has been overwhelming for the candidates and many of the voters here. Not a liability for you? You don't think that extra, that outside influence, that outside, outside attention? Well, look, uh, it's taken on a bit of a life of its own. There's a lot of national interest, but it's about the voters in the 6th District. One of the reasons that people pay so much attention to special elections is that they often are harbingers of what happens in the next midterm election. But Republicans have held this seat since 1979. This was Newt Gingrich's seat. This has been in, in Republican hands for longer than John Ossoff has been on this planet. This district's lines have been drawn and redrawn so many times that many here feel it's an example of textbook gerrymandering. The district was drawn to be safer for Republicans as the Republican Party rose in prominence in Georgia. A Republican state senator even admitted that the lines were not drawn to get Ossoff, a Democrat, elected. Gerrymandering has a number of big political impacts. One is it disenfranchises a whole bunch of voters because it takes out of the realm of competition large swaths of the population. It's not just a Georgia issue. Gerrymandering is allegedly so widespread that the Supreme Court has decided to take up the issue in October. In Georgia, both Republicans and Democrats who failed to vote in November turned out. Were you able to vote in November? I was not, unfortunately. Well, I, I was, but I chose not to, unfortunately. And now you got to get up there. You got to you got to speak your voice. You got to got to do what it takes. The 6th district has been Republican for decades, and I think Republicans will show up and elect the true conservative here in Handel. But make no mistake about it, the president is a little stronger tonight and will shout this victory from the rooftops. And Democrats will have to regroup yet again and prove to themselves that their candidates and agenda can still win. I think it's about us regular common people. I don't think it's about getting money from Martha Vineyard and from the West Coast. They're not us. They don't represent us. Cameron does. For Nightline, I'm Steve Osinsami in Roswell, Georgia.